So it's over half, as a matter of fact, or it has been. It's not now. Uh, so, so let's really look carefully at that. Now, just the reputation and the quality of the kids that are applying, we're taking care of that already. So feel good about that direction of where we're going. The, uh, the next thing is talking to the uh, people in athletics. And one of my first week, I met with the AD. And we had a long talk about stuff. And I said, I'm going to tell you, you throw out your best running back, I'll stand up next to you. We've got to have high quality kids here. Had, a couple of months later, I had me with the coach. And I've met with a lot of these folks. But, and I got home that night and told Marcy, I said, I hope I didn't insult him. I never asked him how the game was. Because we're really talking about the quality of the kids and how we keep them in school and get them to graduate. That is first and foremost to me. The uh, next thing is faculty. And you know, a few years ago, they started a big study on, on tenure and tenure-related subjects. And the Estes Commission returned to retired General Powell Estes, chair of this, faculty involved, regents, lots of people in the university. They came up with 40 recommendations on how we can make it better and stronger so that people don't slip through the cracks and get in, or we catch them and move them on out. Post-tenure review, and frankly, there was an editorial last Saturday in the Rocky Mountain News where certain faculty members think we shouldn't have that anymore, and the quote at the end of it was not exactly what I said, because I was much more forceful in my comment. But yes, I do absolutely support post-tenure review. In fact, beef it up even more, because we don't want to have trouble making faculty. It hurts our reputation, it hurts the university. So these are the things that we're doing, and you'll see an op-ed, we think, this Saturday, when I put out on tenure and how difficult it is to get and what the process is. So people really do understand tenure. You don't just walk in and start with tenure on day one. The, uh, I mentioned earlier, addressing problems immediately. I can tell you, we have a problem a day, and at least, right? What do we know about? We're on it immediately. We're talking to our campus people, we're talking to whoever else we have to talk to, and we address these problems as fast as we can. So we've got 54,000 students. And if anybody can remember back to your teen years, don't seem to be too many teens in this room, but uh, I can remember back, way back then. And you know, we, all were, we weren't perfectly good all the time. So we will have these problems, but take a look at us and see how we address the problems and how we're solving our problems. I think we're doing a great job on that, and we get very, very little bad press. Uh, in fact, I think it's almost none so far. Uh, I want to talk a little more about funding. The, uh, there's four basic sources of funding that we get. I've, I've mentioned private philanthropy. That does not pay operating costs. That's salaries, turning on the lights, etc. So, you know, that's where we're short, is operating funds. Second is research. Again, $661 million. But it doesn't pay, a little bit will help with operating costs, but most of it does not go to pay your operating costs at the university. Tuition, now last year, we are still under our peers that we measure ourselves by, but we're close to being up to it, but not quite. But we had to raise tuition more than we wanted. Why? State mandates are things we had to do. You don't, you don't argue, you just say yes, sir, and you do it. So this cost us to spend, because of that, and equity and some issues I won't go into details on, it's about 48 million bucks. So we had to raise tuition to cover these things. So these are the kinds of things that we're, we're up against as far as funding. So we have to raise tuition to cover this. Now the other one is state support. There's two pieces of that. One is capital development, deferred maintenance, which is building buildings, fixing buildings, fixing things around the campus. And last year we did very well. We had a commitment of $133.5 million. You're right, yes. And uh, we, we've got about 20 million of that on hold right now, but that was that's a really, really big year for us. So we're very pleased with that. I do not expect to get that this year. Times are tight, times are tough. We all know that. The, uh, the other thing is the operations. And all of higher education, the budget for higher ed is about $770 million a year of state support. And we've got, we, the entire higher ed system, got 65 million increase. That was composed of a couple of pieces. One of it's a mill levy freeze, and the other was a miscount on K-12. Uh, kids, which freed up 35 million alone. So that helped us last year. I do not expect that this year. In fact, I expect it to go down this year. Uh, and I want to uh, just stress to you again, 48th nationally is where the state of Colorado ranks, and I want everybody to talk about that to all of your friends. And, you know, for us, uh, we're, we're basically getting about one and a half in this state of what we need just to be average. And if we look at 
our peers and people talk about operating costs. We are, our operating costs, our overhead costs, just the overhead costs, is 20 to 25% less than our peers around the country. So I think we do a good job on that. A lot of business guys say, well, why don't you cut your, cut your overhead? And we've got to cut down pretty tight. In fact, in some cases, I think it's probably a little too tight. The, uh, we need uh, $67 million just to get back, if you put in inflation adjustments and student population growth, back to where we were before the last recession, which was not good. So the numbers keep going down, and we keep having to come up with other ways of funding our institution. Uh, when I got here, I said, well, let's, let's see what we can do to help ourselves. So we set up some task forces. First one is efficiency. And this really comes from when things get really bad, the pendulum's way over here, so you swing it way back over here, and you over-regulate. Well, we're trying to get that back to the middle and look at all the policies and procedures in the university and saying, is this really needed and is it necessary? And I say a lot of times, don't let perfect be the enemy of good, and that's why I've always operated in business. The auditors come in and say, you really ought to do this, you really ought to do that, and I'll say, we can't afford to do that, it doesn't make any sense. So we're trying to do it in a good, sound, business-like way, which is not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna free up a lot of time and let us be a lot more efficient. The, uh, the other thing is alternative funding mechanisms. Frankly, when I started all of that, things were looking fairly decent in Colorado, because that was last spring, I've been on the job now nine months. And so we got all that started, and then all of a sudden the economy goes down. We all know about that. I'm not going to waste your time talking about it. But So I'm not sure if we'll go out with any new solutions. We've got a lot of ideas, but right now is not the time to go to the legislature and say we've got to you know, have a new fee, a new tax, or a new something. Uh, they aren't going to want to do it. There's no, any, no money out there. So let's just be very careful about our timing on that. Another thing we did is when I got here is, is strategic branding. And, and I found out that everybody was branding their own stuff. And as we dug it into a parlor, we found out we have 500 logos at the University of Colorado. So I said, wait, stop, start over. We're going to start university, then each campus, then the, the departments, bring in the foundation, everyone else, so we have a common theme, but individualized for all our different pieces. And I think that's really important if you're going to go out and be raising money, which we're going to be doing, and we have been, been right along. And it's just part of marketing. So we've hired a really first-class firm, Landor. Uh, they have done things like FedEx, and when you hear the story of how they did it, it's really interesting. NCAA, and I, I think that my favorite is they actually branded the country of Jordan. And they told Jordan, your national anthem is too negative. You've got to change it. You have to have a positive beat to this. And I think that's pretty amazing to brand the country. So but these guys are real pros. Great people, we're getting down next week, we have a big meeting to discuss their, what they're learning so far. <coughs> the, um, another thing that I think is really important, I've increased our lobbying operation, particularly in Washington. Uh, I mean, that's where the money is, that's where you need to go. We've been running with 80%, one-eighth one one of, or excuse me, 80% of one person is our law, lobbying operation in Washington. So we're increasing that because that's where the money is, and frankly, whether it was John McCain or Barack Obama, they both don't like earmarks, and we're gonna to have to look at other ways. That means digging into the agencies and, and getting to know more people, getting our faculty more involved, et cetera. So we're gonna do a lot of work on that, and I'm not gonna take a lot of time your time on that. <coughs> the, uh, the other thing, I had one of those at three o'clock in the morning brainstorms a couple of weeks ago, and it was Barack Obama wants a lot of public works projects, and he wants to create jobs now, and I thought, we can help him. So I called all the chancellors. I said, guys, get your list together. I want I want the amount that your project is. I want to know what day you can start it. You know, because a lot of projects in two years, you know, we want to start right now, next few weeks or months. And then how many jobs? So we've submitted all of that. It's uh, $585 million. And we said, well, if you want jobs, there's a way to create it. So we want to get on that list. And I talked to Ken Salazar about this prior to doing it about the time I started it. And he said, well, they could you know, they could be half a trillion dollars. If you think about that, it's 10 billion for the state of Colorado. We've had a lot more than that, but I'm doing the shorthand here. But anyway, I just think that, you know, we gotta get out ahead of the power curve, and we've got to show people that we're gonna lead, and we're gonna be in front of the charge trying to get the extra funding to help our university and to help our state. <coughs> now, we've done outreach, and I got five minutes. Uh, you've already used part of my time. Uh, 
We made 25, 25 stops around the state. And I think it's important that we remember that we don't just have